Hello, everyone. I am Haoling Zhang from uh, ARM. So today my presentation is applying parallel CI testing on ARM64. Uh, this is today's agenda. Firstly, I will discuss the reasons why we need parallel CI tests on ARM64 and the current status of QBiver CI testing on ARM64 and uh, the main obstacles we face when attempting to enable the testing. Then, I will introduce both the old and the new solutions for ARM64 CI testing with la the later using a nested containerized environment. Lastly, I will address some of the main issues we have encountered. Okay, let's begin. Okay, why we need parallel CI testing on ARM64? Uh, here, parallel CI testing refers to the practice of running multiple CI testing tasks on a single server at the, at the same time. To make this possible, we require uh, several which requires several isolated testing environments in which a Kubernetes cluster with QBvert can be set up. By enabling par parallel CI testing on ARM64 platform, we can add ARM64 related CI CD pipelines to the PR sub submission process. This in turn helps us identify functional and the integration issues on ARM64 reduces risk associated with using QBvert on ARM64 platforms and informs users about the QBvert status on ARM64. In terms of the current status, uh, thanks to Brain Carry's help and the support of the QBvert community, we are running all unit tests and 82 E2E tests in every PR pre-submission process on ARM64 server. In case you have not noticed, uh, let me show you in the GitHub website. Okay, we clicked in uh, PR here. So in the bottom, you can see this is all uh, tests running in PR submission process. And here uh, you can see, uh, let me check where it is. Oh. Oh, sorry, it's not up here here. So we choose another one. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, here you can see uh, the poor QBvert unit test ARM64 and the poor QBvert E2E ARM64 test. You can view the overall test results through the following test grade links, uh, which can, and uh, those tests have been run for several months and uh, it seems stable. The primary obstruct way obstacle we face is finding a way to isolate CI testing. On x86-64, virtual machines are used to set up testing environments. However, on the ARM64 platform, we currently do not support nested virtualization. So we can only run tests in a nested containerized environment. 
Secondly, parallel testing in a listed container has not been verified on M64. So we have encountered many issues that others may not have seen. In addition, the bootstrap image that provides a listed container environment that did not support ARM64, so we need to build a multi-arc bootstrap image. This was another challenge, and we have been stuck at this step for a while. Before we having the nested container environment, we used the following solution to run periodic E2Eat task on the ARM64 platform. This allowed us to monitor the basic usability of QBvert on ARM64. As you can see in the right image, we have two Kubernetes clusters one on an x86 server and the other on an m64 server the m64 kubernetes cluster run as an external provider when a periodic e2e test job is triggered it is assigned to the x86 kubernetes cluster after which a bootstrap port is started and performs the following tasks. First, it cross-builds QBvert images and push them to a remote image registry. Next, it uses the ARM platform QBconfig to deploy a QBvert cluster on the, on the ARM64 platform. And finally, E2E tests are run on the ARM64 cluster. However, we encountered several issues in this solution. As Kubernetes was deployed on a developmental ARM64 server, we can only run one CI testing task at a time. Additionally, if the Kubernetes cluster become uh, broken or, get, or corrupt, we had to redeploy the Kubernetes which was difficult to maintain. This approach also does not allow us to run unit tests and cross-compiling, pushing, pulling image to or from remote image registry are time consuming. Here is a new cell solution for ARM64 server that use a nested containerized environment. Some people may have limited experience with this. So here is a brief demo to give you a clear view of what it is, uh, what the nested containerized environment is. Uh, this is an uh, ARM server, and uh, you can see we run a bootstrap uh, image as a container here, and its name is QBvert0. So we step in the container and uh, we can see there are four, uh, four container within this bootstrap image, uh, bootstrap containers. There are three kind, kind of node, uh, which is a control panel node and a two worker node. And another one is uh, Docker registry container. It's kind of a registry container. And you can see we have deployed a Kubernetes cluster within the bootstrap container. 
as well as the QBvert components. So, if we step in, the hind container we can see uh, all Kubernetes uh, port component ports are running within the kind container so it's a container in container in container environment so it's a listed containerized environment. Uh, the testing environment is isolated by containers, which allows us to run multiple tests on a single server. This approach has several advantages. Firstly, it is faster as it uses native build and a local image registry, which save time in compiling image push and poor process. Additionally, we have an isolated Kubernetes cluster that enable us to run parallel testing. We encountered several issues when enabling testing on the ARM64 platform, which are documented in the following links. Uh, here is the list. Uh, some have solved and some haven't solved yet. So here I pick up uh, some issue. Uh, I pick up only some issue here. Uh, and uh, we face two types of issue during the process, uh, host issue and the nested container issue. Uh, as an e example of a host issue, we encountered memory page size problems that caused two related issues. First, the Bazel build process would occasionally freeze. Second, kind net pods were always killed due to out of memory errors. The root case of the issue was difference in memory page size setting between ARM64 and x86. In ARM64, the default memory page size can be set in Linux kernel with available value of 4 KB, 16 KB, 64 KB, and 2 MB. And in CentOS 8, the default memory page size is set to 64 KB. This leads to extremely high memory usage for applications and containers. The table below shows the memory usage of a purse container in 64 KB page size and 4 KB page size. As you can see, in the 64 page size system, the container consumes much more memory than that uh, than that uh, than it does in the 4 KB page size system, with most memory consumed by kernel. The value is 30 times greater than that of 4 KB page size system. When we face this issue, we did not mm, notice the memory page size as the first. This made us spend a lot of time debugging the issue. And uh, this is an example of a nested container issue. 
in a multi-node Kubernetes cluster with client provider. The network connection between the Kubernetes node and pod is disconnected due to reverse path filtering. In the case of a pod network, if the API filter is set to strict model, node uh, network package would be dropped when communication between the kind node and the Kubernetes ports. The root case is the IP table on AT rules, which lead to a change in the source IP. I am not very familiar with the networks, and uh, so I use a silly debug method by add print key in kernel to trace the pa uh, network package. And finally, find the root cases. Huh, okay. Um, this is all about my presentation. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Thank you very much. We have one question in the Q&A chat um, from Chris Caligari. Welcome, Chris. Regarding using kind, can you talk about the process to utilize kind versus minikube? Um, actually, we do not use, I, I, I do not use Minikube often uh, in most occasion because our server is shared between me and other colleagues. So I, I, and usually I, I, I am not able to uh, deploy Belmental, uh, deploy Kubernetes on Belmental server. So I I uh, so I use kind and to deploy Kubernetes just like what I showed as progress. Let's start a bootstrap image and within it um, we can use kind to deploy the Kubernetes cluster. So I'm not sure if Minikube deploy on Belmental or uh, in a nested container environment. All righty, we have a second question. Okay. Uh, how stable is Kubevert on ARM64? Um, how stable? <clears throat> mm, so for now, um, uh, we did do not find some significant bug, uh, when trying to run Kubevert on ARM64, uh, despite the CPU pending. Uh, but we are still verify other future gate if other future gates works well on ARM64. Yes. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, some devices are not uh, support on ARM64. I uh, have uh, put it in a list what devices are supported on ARM64 here. Here. So, uh, as you can see here, the GPU I am not verified. Uh, the sound device is not support, and the watchdog device is not support. But the other device like disk interface and the auto attach uh, like a GPU graphic device are supported on ARM64. Do I answer your questions? 
Uh, we've got, I don't know if you saw, there's two other questions. Maybe that partially answers the first one. When QVERT for ARM64 will reach GA? Mm, uh, yes, it's a good question. So now I'm verifying the future gate. Uh, if uh, all future gate uh, works on ARM64. <clears throat> um, and uh, of course, uh, some future only support, support uh, uh, x86, uh, not only the devices, but also some other future like uh, the uh, uh, no CPU, some CPU feature like the uh, CPU clock. Um, we don't have that one. That's uh, in short, it is. SC or TCS, I'm not sure. Uh, the sequence can x86 and I'm 64 work loud can call x Oh, yes. Uh, uh, there is a PR for the hybrid cluster. Uh, I can show you. Uh, let me check. Yes, this PR. Uh, so I tried this PR on, uh, and uh, it allow you to to run both uh, to manage both x86 uh, and ARM64 workload in a, in one cluster. So if you want, you can give it a try. Uh, 